Hi, I'm Christy Snell. I'm the Chief Science Officer and Vice President of Research here at Yield 10 Bioscience. Today, I'm going to talk about genome editing, in particular, genome editing in camelina to increase oil content. Genome editing is a powerful tool, but there are still challenges associated with it. Most importantly, what gene combinations should you edit to increase a trait such as oil content, a trait where editing combinations of genes is likely key? But before I start, I need to go over our safe harbor statement. Yield 10 is a public company. We have our headquarters in Woburn, Massachusetts, and we also have an oil seed center of excellence in Saskatoon, Saskatchewan. There are forward-looking projections that I will be discussing today, and there are certain risks and uncertainties associated with these projections. Yield 10's crop innovation platform uses both genome editing and traditional GMO approaches to fix more carbon through photosynthesis and direct this fixed carbon to the target organ of interest, which in this case is the seed. We are currently focusing on camelina and are employing strategies to increase seed yield and oil content, as well as produce other high value seed products. We engineer our traits into camelina and perform field tests to evaluate the impact of the trait. Results from these field tests can be used to address two different revenue streams. They can be used to develop elite camelina lines that can be used in our camelina seed products business, which includes in the near term biofuels and in the longer term omega oils and PHA bioplastics. Another potential revenue stream for results from the field tests is trait licensing with ag companies. This allows them to test the traits in their own hands, in their own germplasm. We are focusing our efforts on developing camelina to become a robust high value crop for oils and specialty products. We see this crop as a platform for a closed loop product system where one could produce feedstock in North America, process feedstock in North America, and then sell the resulting products in North America. One of the benefits of camelina is that it has a high oil content, which is typically in the range of 35 to 40% of the seed weight. Importantly, camelina does not outcross with important food crops such as canola. There are also two varieties of camelina, spring and winter varieties, and winter varieties are very intriguing as a possible cover crop where they can remove excess nitrogen from the prior season's crop growth to prevent nutrient runoff. In many regions, winter camelina could provide the ability to produce two crops per year from the same land, for example, by relay cropping with soybean. But to be successful, camelina needs improvements, and this is where our target identification, genome editing, and GMO work come into play. Improvements to camelina could transform it into a high revenue, high yield, low carbon index crop that would help it secure acreage as a renewable diesel feedstock. Markets are driving a tremendous need for oil to supply projected biofuel capacity in the US, which is expected to reach 5 billion gallons by 2024. It will take a lot of oil to supply this projected capacity, and Camelina has the potential to play a significant role for supplying these markets. We are working on improvements to increase Camelina yield and oil content and are adding herbicide tolerance and disease resistance. Today, I will focus the talk on yield 10 efforts to increase oil content for the purposes of biofuel production with a focus on achieving increased oil content through genome editing. I'm going to go over two methods that we have used to successfully find combinations of traits to edit, the use of known targets from the literature and moving beyond known targets using a novel gene discovery platform that we have developed in-house. In the first method, we identify individual gene targets based on their literature precedents for being associated with oil biosynthesis and combine these targets and test plants to see if oil is increased. As an example of this first method, we designed a strategy to increase oil biosynthesis and reduce its turnover in the seed. This targeted at a transcription factor known to negatively regulate oil biosynthesis, which is C3009. We then edited genes to prevent or reduce oil turnover during seed maturation, which are targets C3008A and C3008B. These are both oil body associated lipases. By editing the combinations of these three genes, 
we expect to increase oil content. Since camelina is an allohexaploid, which just means it has three copies of most genes in the genome, editing these three gene targets actually requires the editing of nine total genes. These nine total genes were edited simultaneously using a multiplex genome editing strategy using CRISPR-Cas9, and lines with different edits were isolated. One of the gene targets, C3009, besides being associated with regulating fatty acid biosynthesis, also impacts the color of the seed coat. When all three copies of this gene are edited, the normal brown camelina seed coat becomes yellow, and you can see this in the picture. This is very interesting to us because it is a unique distinction to track edited seed. Lines grown in the greenhouse were screened for seed oil content and seed yield. We also measured metrics such as the percent increase in oil per individual seed, the percent increase in an individual seed weight, and also the percent increase in the number of seeds per plant. We identified one line, E3902, that had a 9% increase in seed oil content and also a 5% increase in the total amount of oil produced per plant. There were other lines that were isolated, such as lines two and three, that had a substantial increase in the amount of oil per individual seed, but this was met with a substantial decrease in the number of seeds per plant. This decreased seed yield lowered the overall oil produced per plant in lines two and three, suggesting a significant shift in carbon petitioning to oil at the expense of seed production. We do believe there's an opportunity to further engineer the compromise lines two and three to increase seed yield. We consulted USDA FIS through their former AMI regulated process and in 2018 received confirmation that USDA APHIS did not consider these edited lines to be regulated. These lines were then put in field tests in 2019 at a site in the United States. The best performing line in the field was again E3902. It had a 4.7% increase in seed oil content and a calculated 15% increase in total oil produced per hectare. We have also run E3902 in field tests in 2020, and the data was similar to that observed in 2019. 2021 field data is becoming available and is looking promising. We are scaling up E3902 in the 2021 contra season to help us meet demand for renewable diesel. E3902 was developed by combining individual gene targets based on their literature precedents for being associated with oil biosynthesis. In this next section, I'll talk about our strategies to move beyond known targets and attempt to find completely novel gene combinations to edit to achieve increased oil content. This method relies on a gene discovery platform that we've developed in-house and that we call GRAIN. This is a fully integrated synthetic biology approach that focuses on basic metabolism and can be used for mining public and private data sets. It consists of both regulatory and metabolic modeling. Basically, one inputs crop-specific data, and the output is an actionable list of gene modifications that can then be engineered. Grain was used to look for genes to modify to increase seed oil content in camelina. In this particular example, we have used grain to search only for transcription factors, which are essentially gene switches. The grain can also be used to find other genes. We use publicly available Camelina data sets as an input for grain and obtained the output of a ranked list of gene targets that were predicted to increase seed oil content. At the very top of the list are some known gene targets that have been well studied. WRI1 or wrinkled 1 is known to play an important role in oil biosynthesis and MYB56 is well known to be involved in controlling seed size. The presence of these genes at the very top of our list, we feel validates our approach. We then reduce the number of genes of interest in our target list to 25 transcription factors using a proprietary ranking procedure, and then shows the four candidates that were most relevant and least studied. We overexpress these four candidates in Camelina to determine if they affected oil content. C3020, when overexpressed, gave a 10% increase in seed oil. 
The other three candidates, when overexpressed, actually had a detrimental effect on either oil biosynthesis or seed yield, and we believe they may be good editing targets. We are currently editing C3021 to determine if there's a beneficial effect if this gene is knocked out. Our grain approach gave us many uncharacterized genes that had not previously been associated with oil biosynthesis, and this is valuable intellectual property white space. Grain gives you a prioritized list of gene targets that you can then test. This is important because it allows you to dedicate your resources to analyze only high value gene targets and not waste your resources on screening lots of lower value targets. As an illustrative example, if you want to test all three gene combinations of a thousand interesting gene targets that are identified from let's say genomics work, you would have to test 166 million combinations to get all the possible three gene combinations. But if you use grain to lower the number of interesting gene targets to 10, testing all three gene combinations of only 10 interesting gene targets requires only 120 experiments to be done, which is a more manageable task. We can't test all gene combinations, but if you can narrow down the targets, then the testing becomes a manageable task. In summary, the oilseed crop Camelina needs improvements in yield and oil content to make it a competitive crop platform for the production of renewable diesel. For complex traits such as increased oil content, multi-gene combinations are going to be key. Yield10 is investigating two approaches for identifying these important gene combinations to increase oil content. One of these is based on combining individual gene targets known to be associated with oil content. We developed line E3902 using this approach and obtained a 4.7% increase in seed oil content in 2019 field trials and a 5.6% increase in 2020. E3902 has a differentiated seed color and we are scaling this lineup this year in the contra season to meet demand for renewable diesel. We are also using our novel grain platform to move beyond known gene targets and identify novel genes. We have identified four targets that are predicted to impact oil content. One of these, C3020, when overexpressed, gives a 10% increase in oil in greenhouse data. This line is in field trials in 2021 and results are not yet available. We have three additional targets from this effort that when overexpressed in Camelina reduce seed and or oil content. This suggests that they are better editing targets and we are in the process of editing one of these targets. There is a potential to further stack the targets that we have found and also to stack them with oil composition traits such as high oleic acid lines or omega oil producing lines. I'd like to thank you for your, your attention and I'd be happy to answer any questions.